So there's a number of things people can do in our community to protect their health uh, when there's smoke in the air. And the first really is just to be aware of when there is smoke in the air. And there's an index called the Air Quality Index, or AQI, that lets people know how dangerous the air is. And it ranges from zero to 200, 200 being very unhealthy air, and zero being very clean air. So um, I like to run, and when there's smoke in the air, usually before I go for a run, I'll look at the air quality index. There's actually a link to the air quality index on Community Hospital's website. Today I just checked it was 56, which is moderate, so I'm gonna feel comfortable going for a run. If tomorrow the winds change and it's 140 and it's unhealthy, then I'm probably not gonna go for a run and find another way to exercise. And similarly, if the air quality index is elevated, I would try to avoid outdoor activity. So the people that are most at risk when there's smoke in the air are people with lung disease, and that can include many different types, such as asthma, emphysema, COPD, or even newborns that are born premature and have uh, lung conditions related to their prematurity. So really anybody with a lung condition that um, is exposed to smoke is going to feel more symptomatic or even might get sick from the air. So uh, if you're somebody who's uh, feeling symptoms uh, related to smoke exposure, um, there's a couple of things that we find worrisome. The first is, is just simply the feeling of difficulty breathing. If you feel like you can't catch your breath, if going up the stairs is difficult. Um, the second would be wheezing, which is kind of a high-pitched, uh, uh, almost like a, some people describe it as a singing noise when you exhale. Um, and that's something that uh, suggests that your lungs are, are having trouble fully exhaling. Um, additionally, uh, um, a significant cough um, related to smoke exposure can also suggest that your lungs are not doing well from the smoke exposure. Um, and then lastly, if anyone uh, has a chronic lung condition and measures their oxygen level on a regular basis, a dropping oxygen saturation would be very concerning. So uh, for people who have lung conditions when there's smoke in the air, they should discuss with their doctor what their action plan is. As an example, I have asthma um, and uh, I have an action plan for when I have asthma symptoms. I might increase the dose of my inhaler or I might use my rescue inhaler. Um, I might take an oral medication and use my inhaler again. It's something that I've worked out with my doctor what I need to do when I'm having asthma symptoms. So really, the, the thing that would be most concerning to me that a person needs to seek medical attention is when they've gone down their action plan for their lung illness and they're still feeling very unwell or having trouble breathing or their interventions aren't working. For somebody who doesn't yet have an action plan, now would be a great time, given all the fires in California, to make an appointment with your doctor to work out a plan and if someone doesn't have a plan and they've got an inhaler and they feel like they can't breathe and their inhaler's not working, then that would be a fine time to seek medical attention. Um, so uh, the air quality index is, is a measure basically of how healthful or unhealthful the air is. Um, and you might be wondering how to interpret it. And the air quality index is a number from zero to 200 and it's broken down into good, moderate, unhealthful for sensitive groups, unhealthy, very unhealthy, and hazardous. Um, and basically what you're going to look at is if you want to exercise uh, outside, good or moderate would be fine. Unhealthful for sensitive groups, you probably should consider avoid exposure, and definitely anyone who has um, a lung condition should avoid air exposure at that time. Um, but I guess one of the nice things about COVID, if there is one, is there's loads of exercise videos on YouTube, and you can find something fun and healthful to do inside your home. So let's say you've got some difficulty breathing and it's a smoky day and you don't know if it's COVID or if it's a smoke exposure. So the first question you really have to ask yourself is, were you exposed to smoke? Did you smell a smoky odor, whether it was inside your house or did you have to go outside when there was definite smoke? If you haven't really been exposed to any smoke, we may want to think about something besides a smoke exposure that's causing your symptoms. And there are more things on the planet that cause difficulty breathing than just smoke exposure and COVID. Could it be a problem with your heart? Could you have undiagnosed asthma? There are many possibilities. So for anyone who experiences difficulty breathing and they've not had it before or they're unsure of the cause, seeking medical attention on an urgent basis is a great idea and there's lots of great options for how to seek healthcare. Specifically to COVID as well, you should also ask yourself, have you had any exposures? 
Have you been sheltering in place? Have you been working from home? Without any known exposure and staying in your home, it's very unlikely to be COVID. But if you're worried, it's always a good idea to seek medical attention if you don't feel like you know what's going on or if you feel like you're getting worse in any way.